comments, citizens, regarding the agenda items? Just a quick note here. We got a lot of positive comments uh, during our uh, time at Expo this year. Some very close, nothing specific. A lot of good comments that uh, we would I just wanted to let you know that John Reese handed out more business cards than you, but that yours were right there, but his was going out. <laughs> <laughs> we have staff reports. Uh, we're in need for an executive session due to some conflicting times here with our attorney and stuff. So with that, wait out to go over to you on the executive session items. Certainly. There are several items for executive session. Uh, some of them fall under negotiations. I'll go down through. There's about uh, nine issues here for executive session. One is negotiations GSA, negotiations Longshoremen's Union, legal discussion Waddington, foreign trade zone uh, negotiations agreement, Cape Air negotiations, RPC negotiations, uh, opinion from council on uh, legislation C-10, Outside counsel regarding the uh, Great Crossing case. There's some information I need to relay there. And an update on our pursuant of uh, our efforts to pursue legal services. So that covers the nine, nine items for executive session. Okay. Is there any questions on items? Are we taking those out of order or are those coming at the end of a meeting? Executive session. These are a combination of things that are in the regular business item agenda, and uh, I think two of these items are under other such matters. But are we saving them for the end, or are we doing them up front? Um, no, we need, really need to do them up front because we're limited on council time. Okay. okay. I have another meeting at 6 Okay. Okay. So prior to asking for the motion, uh, John, did you have someone that you wanted to... No, I just wanted to introduce uh, John Paniton. This will be an opportunity to meet the board. He's with Canadian Projects Limited, who's handling the windmill cargo for Canadian Renewable Energy Corp. He happens to be in town today and helping us out with the project. And Marshall Miller, who's our counsel for the Foreign Trade Zone, and has been helping us out with And they're going to be available for meetings. a minute for executive session. Yep. Yes. I need a motion to go into executive session, please. I'll move. Second. All right. John uh, all in favor, say no, be saying aye. Aye. Thank you. This is Fred Carter, our board chairman, Mary Farley, Jim Thu, I don't know if you got or not. Don Hooper, all board members, Frank, our council, Jim Thu. Mary, nice to meet you. Mary, nice to meet you. Okay. Uh, Steve's back in the room. All right. So we'll go back to regular session. We're going to go right to the staff reports, the executive director's reports. Uh, basically, just in addition to what's here, we've had substantial discussions with Cape Air regarding the upcoming schedule. Uh, St. Lawrence Valley Air Task Force, a uh, number of different organizations. Uh, just been a busy all-around month. Are there any questions? Are there any questions on the, uh, the report at all? Well, the only thing about Cape Air that we probably should report here is there's been a, a shrinking there in, in the amount of leasing that they're leasing from it, which is going to reduce our lease oh, that certainly. we had previous. Certainly. I figured I'd uh, discuss that at the uh, resolution okay. at the That's agenda fine. item, but uh, it's basically new square footage, 384 square feet versus a prior big sky square footage of 4,600 square feet. Um, there is a difference, of course, in uh, revenue coming into the authority, and that difference about sixty sixty one thousand $61,000. Okay, anybody, any questions of uh, wage report? Being none, we'll move right into the Chief Financial Officer, Mr. Mack. Okay, how much uh, money did you spend and how much you saved? You want to know? Well, we're looking pretty positive this year, Fred. Uh, 
the end of the year is upon us, and we'll be going through the next couple of weeks getting the final numbers ready for the fiscal year end. Uh, through 11 months, we're certainly doing much better than we were a year ago. We've got a $137,000 operating income as opposed to a $167,000 loss. So uh, next month we can go through that with 12 months of numbers and explain a lot of those, those differences. And the auditors will be here probably middle of May um, to work on the annual audit. And June 30th is the deadline um, for New York State to submit the audit and the annual report. Um, as far as the bridge traffic goes, um, in the green binders, we have 12 months' worth of activity there. Uh, for the year, we had 565,000 crossings um, compared with 507,000 a year ago. And the bulk of that is, of course, the, the auto traffic went up. Insurance renewals, April 30th, um, coming up. We'll talk about that with an agenda item later. And other than that, so I'm on the closing out the year and getting ready for that stuff. <coughs> We're making our our uh, seventy-five thousand dollar payment to the state. That was made. That uh, was through the thirty-first of March, and we paid that. Through, so. <coughs> okay. Mark, the auditors meet with our audit committee at some point during the process. Yes, I think last year they met on their last day of field work. Maybe it was when they were getting started. I think it was near the end of the field work. And we'll do the same thing again this year, maybe even an entrance interview and an exit interview, depending on the, your time. Uh, I'm not on that committee okay. at this point. Yeah. But, uh, Jim and I are. Okay. So I am interested in, in the contact there because the, everything is coming down where the importance of audit committees, uh, I know we have this a lot, situations where we didn't always do that, we always do. Probably be cute if you were on that with your accounting background. Couldn't put them on both. Then there was a conflict there. So I put them on the audit and take them off the, um, the other one. Well, I yeah. thought we talked about that. Well, I'll talk to you later about that. And I just think in this day and age when you were supposed but to... But there's no reason why he can't attend that audit meeting. He wants to. Maybe I will. Yep. I'll make sure you're notified. Is there anything else at Mark's report? <laughs> Mr. Reesh? Oh, you got your sleeves rolled up on it. Oh, thank you. Give a good report. <laughs> Speak up like an area. Our application to amend the boundaries of the foreign trade zone has been approved. Uh, we have a resolution on there tonight for the foreign trade zone <laughs> operator's bond. If approved, that'll be... Uh, in place tomorrow. We'll be all set there. We've been having a lot of meetings that you heard on the windmill cargo as well as the foreign trade zone, getting making sure all that's in line before the, the ships arrive. We've done some outreach to some New York State firms and actually have two meetings this week for potential additional bulk cargoes, just preliminary meetings. A uh, meeting later this week as well for a uh, shell building tenant. And uh, I guess those are the main things I wanted to touch on. Now, do you have yourself diary so that you can follow up on the letter you sent to the Ontario Ministry of Transportation, or how, how do you follow up on those things? I mean, how do we know that they're not just to take the letter and do nothing with it while off the radar screen? We expect a response. We'll you follow will? Up on it. Same way with the Capital Corridor. We've already kind of gotten a response on that. We're going to follow up on that as well. <laughs> Any other questions? John Bridgewater. Okay. Stephen Lawrence, Director of Operations Report. Um, well, on the Industrial Park Building, I've taken a couple board members um, over to look. If anyone's interested, uh, I'd be glad to show you around. But we've got probably another week to ten days and we'll be substantially complete with it, the exception of the uh, paving of the parking lots and uh, grass and, and plantings and things like that, but it's coming along pretty good. At, uh, just a little painting remains and some uh, fire sprinkler uh, uh, work has to be done. So um, we're probably three weeks behind schedule. It was scheduled to be done this week, but uh, a number of just a couple things uh, came into that and 
uh, as they re, uh, relate to the power. So on average, without the power thing, everything was on time. So um, it's not hurting us right now, but um, we should be good by the end of the month. Um, on the bridge, on the rehab project, we received the final design report this week, and that basically is uh, ours and our engineers and the state of uh, New York agreeing on how we're going to proceed on that project. Um, I can give anybody an update they need to on how we're, uh, well, uh, which way we're going to head on that, but I think in general everybody knows uh, where we're headed there. And uh, we, uh, I've been working pretty heavily with uh, Canadian Projects Limited doing the logistics and uh, working with the ILA and trying to get everything coordinated for the upcoming project. Um, so far, so good, but um, we're really going to have to, a lot of activities are going to go on in the next month. And lastly, uh, we did get a load of uh, road salt, about 9,000 tons. Um, that came in about uh, eight, nine days ago, and uh, we've already shipped out 6,500 of that 9,000. So that's there'll be just a little bit to relocate, and we're trying to get North American to send us another ship before all this work begins with the windmills, and we don't want any kind of uh, issue with moving materials around and logistics when uh, you've got all that in port. So we're, we're hoping to get that by the May 1st uh, deadline. But um, And that's also great to American fault, or is that Morton? Uh, we were, we've been talking to North American. I haven't heard anything from Morton yet. Steve, I'm talking in that line, there's there's a twofold thing there. There's the ships coming in to unload, okay, and then from one end we have the barges coming. Right. If we looked at both of that in case something happens, if a ship does come in, what what do we what do we work? Uh, you mean a salt ship? Yeah. Um, we can. What we do, we've got. We've got a, that. We've thought of that, Fred. We're trying to just give an alternative location. It's not going to be that traditional. You remember, you see at the end of the dock, you see the huge pile. Right. That was where we first offload. We lighten the ship and move it forward. What we're thinking is there's an area just outside the foreign trade zone, so we won't be in, in any way involved with the windmills where we could we could drop some of that, and we'll, it'll all have to be relocated anyway. So what we're hoping to do is lighten the ship outside of that area and then move the ship ahead put it where it normally is, but that pile that we lighten will still have to be moved. It's just going to be closer, so we can do that with loaders. <clears throat> Are we going to be able to put it in the, on, the, on the inner harbor? It, um, not right, Not probably not early. It'll probably, that'll be something we'll really have to concentrate the end of September and October. And unless Morton shows up, um, they've got the area right by the transflow. Um, if if they can make that happen, we could relocate there. But I just think the time, with the time going on, we don't want to be moving salt and moving around there no. with all that. So we're just kind of blocking out that area, just like uh, John was talking from May through uh, middle of September. Any other questions? facilities um, discussed uh, building nine uh, heating and ventilating uh, units and going to replace two there uh, talked a little bit about the engine house uh, rehabilitation and money available for that and request from New York Nogsburg Railway to um, Possibly use some of the funds for the engine house for some rail replacement. No action out of that uh, <clears throat> from that discussion. Also, just uh, reviewed and contract with CNS engineers for the airport perimeter fence. Uh, there is a resolution in your board packet tonight recommending that we uh, execute contract with CNS for the perimeter fence replacement. Basically, it. Any questions of uh, Kim's report? 
Mr. Chairman, may I add that um, the personnel committee meeting was left off the agenda. We had a meeting on March 11th, which was just a couple days after our last March um, full board meeting date. And um, we opened that at 8 a.m. and we closed it about 10:10. 10 10 at um, we went into it immediately went into executive session because we were discussing organizational issues and personnel. That's what I have to add on that. And I'd also like to make an announcement um, that I'm sure my board members have seen that there's been a realignment of um, committee structure. And I had previously tendered my resignation from the personnel committee um, to the chairman. And I feel it's properly proper to briefly just comment on that decision mostly to my board members because I certainly don't want any of you to think that that decision was born of any personal motive or desire to um, limit my activities or relieve myself of committee workload or board responsibilities. Um, the committee has apparently become um, tainted with allegations that there were unbiased dealings by the uh, committee, and I do want to assure the my fellow board members that um, I deny any characterization that I've ever been anything other than objective and unbiased, not only as a board member, but as a committee, chair, or as a committee chairperson, as a committee member. But the truth of the matter is that um, from staff's perspective, the personnel committee, uh, its mission is suspect and questionable. And so I thought the most uh, pertinent thing to do on my part was to uh, resign so that the staff would be assured that there would be no taint and I wouldn't want the personnel committee's um, objectives to be jeopardized or undermined. Um, I've had a private conversation with Mr. Carter and based on that conversation I would certainly like to make a public recommendation that Mr. Hooper be given a board member to serve with him on the personnel committee to discharge those duties since they are hefty and uh, certainly are unabated. And um, of course this certainly would not have any impact on our chairperson to serve as ex officio member of any or all of the committees. Thank you, Mary. And I'll uh, take your consideration or your recommendation. Okay, is there anybody else? Any questions? Okay, we can move on to the uh, agenda items or the events. I, I just got one thing I'd like to put in here just quickly, if I may. Unfinished business. Uh, Excuse me, Sam, for not introducing you to the hall. Gets me my act. Get the money, yeah. <laughs> uh, most of the people here know Sam. Uh, Sam Lamachi has been appointed by Governor uh, Spitzer, ex-Governor Spitzer, and uh, Sam and uh, myself are both waiting for the con to be confirmed by the Senate. Where that ends up, I don't believe until the budgets are done, they don't do anything. It's no different than the rest of us went through. But uh, Sam wanted to come by and see us, and... Uh, uh, I welcome you aboard, Sam, when you get here. That's the best I can do um, at this time, anyways. So is May 6th the next upcoming date for I don't... May 6th, that's uh, Tuesday? I don't have my calendar with me. It should, yeah. Tuesday, it should yes. be the first Tuesday. First Tuesday. Don't we always do the first Tuesday yeah. every month? Yeah. Yep. General. I believe everything should be good there for me, too. Uh, I'm sorry about this one here, Gene and change. So May 6th again? Mm-hmm. Yep. 4 o'clock or 4.30? 4. 4. 4 Is that that with everybody? Mm -hmm. Hopefully. <coughs> okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I mean, we're under schedule of meetings. Yep. <clears throat> Since I've been on here, I've had 20 meetings I've attended. And of that, we've changed 12 of them. I guess... And I'm only bringing up the board for discussion. Can we, you know, I mean, we all have busy schedules, but we're changing everybody's schedule all the time. So 12 out of 20 times, 60% of our meetings are changed. Is there any way we can either agree on the schedule and keep it there or because we've changed, in my opinion, when you're serving the public and you're, you're letting the public come to your meetings, changing them all the time is not real good when people know it's the first Tuesday, not that we get a whole lot of public people here. But is there a way we can discuss that or come up with a resolution as a board, or maybe the board just continues well, what, to say. I can only respond this way. Is, is I don't control uh, what I, 
I get my meetings scheduled every week, mm -hmm. and there's sometimes I have to be at the meetings. The only thing we can do, instead of putting the schedule out like this, is we'll do it at every meeting, schedule the next month's meeting. Yeah, but that's well, you gotta, what happens. Every time we schedule it, we get more emails that say things yeah. come around. And so we got the co-chairman the co -chairman and, and all those other people. I mean, that's... Well, he wasn't here at the time, but he was here, and I didn't know that, or I wouldn't have asked you to change. I guess it'd be just... I'm only, I'm only speaking one because I set my, my schedule set for the year. I put it into my calendar, and I set my schedule meetings around this. This is my city council stuff and all that, so I build my schedule around this. Well, luckily I can fluctuate sometimes. Sometimes it's very difficult. So I'm only saying it, you know, 60% of the time in the last 20 meetings, we've changed the meetings, 12 out of 20. The date has changed for whatever reason. But they're always asked if we can change them. Oh, I know, but it's... It's becoming more the norm than the than the exception. All I'm saying is maybe we could rely on if you, Mr. Chairman, can't be here, then the vice chairman could be here to run the meetings or whatever. I'm just throwing it out there for discussion because I'm sure it throws the staff's time and everything into a as well. I will take your uh, under consideration. I want I'll do well, that board decision, decision anyway. I guess yeah. I just want to talk. We've about always it. tried to shoot for the first day. The yeah. only reason we do that is like next. February, if you're discussing vacation with your family, you usually know the first Tuesday of that month you're probably not going to you know, try to plan around. And I think that's helpful to do. And it's also helpful, I think, most of us bring our planners or whatever with us to make sure we don't have a conflict. So I think it's good that we stay established at one particular day of a week. week. I think that's helpful. Mm -hmm. No problem. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> business items. First item is uh, agenda item A1, general administration. This is approval of the supplement with Dr. Matthew Brackman. This is a supplemental lease agreement with Dr. Brackman, 1,054 square feet on the first floor of the Bridge Administration Building, two-year period commencing May 1, 2008, expiring April 30th, 2010. <coughs> The rental rates there are provided for your review. Included in this agreement is a requirement for proof of appropriate insurance, naming OBTA as additional insurance. Any questions? We need a motion to accept. So moved. We have a second. I'll second it. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Lord. Agenda item B1, Port of Ogdensburg. This is the approval of the agreement with Local 217A, the International Longshoremen's Association. <coughs> there have been productive uh, negotiations with the Longshoremen's Association for stevedoring services. Current agreement expires April 1, 2008. Uh, as you can see, there's a summary of contract changes there, and staff recommends approval of the agreement. We have a motion to approve the agreement. I make the motion. Mary and Don, second. Mm -hmm. I will not be voting on this agreement, but <coughs> all in favor, second over saying aye. Aye. I've got a question, maybe of legal counsel. I'm going to say I would consider abstaining as well. My uncle was the president of Longshoremen's Union. Okay. So no, no personal gain to me or anything like that. Neither one of us. But yeah. So I'm abstaining also. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, I All in favor? Second over saying aye. Aye. That's true. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, yeah but when you were cute, don't, don't you when you... Well, you got you got a quorum for the meeting of five. Right. <clears throat> you got a majority of the people mm -hmm. present voting. That's right. I think you're okay. You got the three. You got the three. Yeah. Now, if we didn't have three votes, we'd be in trouble, but... No. You got a you you got a quorum. It's a majority of the people present at a newly called meeting. What press there is? This is uh, <coughs> the agreement with Woodcrest Dairies for a total of 83 acres plus or minus uh, 14 <coughs> acres east of Echo. <coughs> excuse me, 19 acres west of Echo. 10 acres adjacent to Graymont Materials and four. 40 plus or minus acres on Wagner Road. The term of this agricultural agreement would be May 1st, 2008 through November 30th, 2008. Um, standard that you saw last year included in this agreement is a hold harmless clause. 
proof of appropriate insurance coverage as well as a 60-day termination option, uh, which we could enable uh, should we have the uh, industrial need for the property. I'll make a motion. I'll second that. <clears throat> motion made by Jim, seconded by Bill. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Did you have a use for the other property? That is that? <laughs> Wagner Road. Yes, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Item B3 is approval of a handling and storage agreement with Drummond's Limited. This is the uh, terminus lease is May 1, 2008 through July 31, 2008. This is for continued handling and storage up to 7,600 tons of dried distiller grains at the port at the rate you see before you. Proof of appropriate insurance, naming OBPA, additional insurance is also required. Do you have some down there now? Thank you. I have a motion? So moved. Second, Second by Bell. All in favor, say good saying aye. 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 Jack, Bell. Come on, Bell. Item B4 is the Court of Ogdensburg is approval of purchase of foreign trade zone operators bond. To activate foreign trade zone 118 for the importation of windmill cargoes required that a foreign trade zone operators bond be purchased. The face value of the bond is $100,000 for this cargo. To ensure competitive pricing, we reached out to four firms for bonds. You'll see the corresponding dollar amounts there. Based on the review of the proposal, staff recommends the bond be purchased from FedEx Trade Networks for the amount of $800. Acceptance of this proposal requires the authority to execute a customs power of attorney to appoint FedEx Trade Networks, <coughs> transport, and brokerage to act on behalf of the authority for the bond. Who didn't quote us? No, there was three. Three we reached out. Oh, contacted three. Oh, I'm sorry. I did, I did say four. Three. I'll make the motion. Motion made by Mary. Second. Second by Bill. All in favor, second to say aye. 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 <laughs> Item C1 is approval of a uh, lump sum consultant agreement with CNS Engineers for Ogdensburg International Airport. This is part of the five-year capital improvement program for the airport and involves the uh, removal, replacement, and realignment of approximately 13,000 lineal feet of fence. That's uh, currently five foot high, replacing it with an eight foot high fence. Um, CNS has submitted a proposal for design services for the project in the amount of $20,100. Specifics on this project, the total project cost is estimated to be $736,000 and the entire project will be 100% funded by the Federal Aviation Administration. Any questions? Uh, one quick Good question. Uh, just for, for my benefit here, what exactly is an independent fee estimate? You're talking here in the last paragraph. Costs associated are below 100000 so an independent fee estimate is not required. If the, uh, uh, let's say, for example, CNS uh, had come in for whatever reason and said that it was going to be $101,000, what that does, that triggers basically an independent review of CNS uh, to make sure that the project is, in fact, reasonable. And who would do that review? That would generally be a third party, Steve. A we third had party one engineering firm would just look at it to make sure it's fair and reasonable. So more like a, a peer review. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Hopefully someone from out of the area so it's not your direct right. competitor. Exactly. We usually get, get three of different ones to perform it for us. And this would be for the facilities committee, is that right, Jim? Yes, it was. You okay. recommended to come to full board. I'll make the motion. Motion by Mary. Second. Seconded by Don. All in favor, say aye. 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 Full. So ordered. Item C2 with the airport's approval of lease agreement with Cape Air. Um, as you know, Cape Air has, has been selected by USDOT to provide essential air service to the North Country airports, uh, commencing on or before September 16, 2008. We've prepared a two-year lease with Cape Air for the use of the passenger terminal building at the uh, airport associated with providing the essential air services. Cape Air is looking to lease only 384 square feet of the space. 
You can see the rental rates there. The lease term is September 1, 2008 through August 31, 2010. Basically included in this agreement is a security deposit in the amount of $35.85, requirement for proof of appropriate insurance, naming OBPA as additional insured. Uh, one thing that we did add here is under this agreement, the OBPA will prorate utility costs and bill Cape Air according to their portion of utility expenses. And based on this, basically out of our budget, we're losing 61000 based on prior terminal lease rates. Is that right? That's correct. How much when you of look at When you look at the total amount of square footage that Big Sky rented, it was 4,600 square mm -hmm. feet, total dollar amount, uh, $75,000 uh, range. How much more the than three, when we... The 384 square feet equates to about $14,000, a net loss on revenue line to the authority of sixty one thousand dollars. Okay. How much of the building will we be able to parse up and rent out then if we're only going to be leasing 384 square feet? We have the um, other side of the building, the other half of the building, How many uh, both on the air side and the uh, the land side. <laughs> Fairly, we have a map right here. I want to say it's around 2,500 square. It's usable right now, or do yeah, we have one, yeah, that we, walls? And one side of that, it will only be used by someone that has any kind of security clearance because you can only access that from the, the air now, side. Is that where the fire truck is now? Yeah, that's right. So that's what I'm talking about. My question is, if we got to maintain that fire truck in that facility, right? Right. Because the people there in that area are trained, right? Um, yes, hopefully the, the people, you mean with the airline? No, TSA, who, who, who do we have trained before? They will be trained for ARF. No, I do not anticipate that Cape Air will be trained in ARF. Big Sky was trained in ARF. Uh, Cape Air most likely will not, as a uh, nine-passenger plane does not require ARF service, yet we have to... Maintain our capability okay. as part of our operating certificate at the airport. <laughs> so then they, they yeah, if, if we locked that rolling door and made it part of the front space, Fred, we could we could figure something out where we could rent that. Yeah, it's just the security part of it is why you can't just rent it to anybody. Okay. That's the only reason. Oh, here, but we could move the truck out of there and and tie it into that front space. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay. Wait, how many square feet did Big Sky lease? Forty six hundred in total. Forty six hundred. So they had the entire. Basically, the entire building, with the exception of the plus the air side. So it's laid out. Third of that. Oh, have that. It's only it's like two this. thirds of the building they have. It's not half. And this was the fire. This is the terminal. And this was the space we were trying to lease before. So I mean, this effectively will be unable to oh, lease. Yeah. They're only right at 384 square feet of it, the, the actual counter area. And as Steve said, we could open this up and, and lease this portion, which is probably comparable to this, which is 46. Well, you need a security but clearance. The big guy had the front mm -hmm. section. I'm letting you guys lock that door. This guy leases this, this whole thing. Out there TSA leases this whole area. Yeah, yeah. No <laughs> and TSA will not lease any. TSA still so they have a small area. portion in this area. They have a yeah. very small portion. So essentially, we were running the terminal. The, the, area. the common right. area was yes. going to... The big sky, big sky was paying the common area. So the office same footprint as it was before. Right. So they, they aren't using that anymore? There's the a couple offices? Yeah, they're using those. Uh, uh, big, yeah, the, uh, office, they're gonna, the office is only That's all. is what's total of the 384 so square feet. Lobby. So the lobby and the window and all that? Yeah, that's all. That's all ours. That's correct. Well, basically, you know, the ESA is saying, hey, you're going to provide a terminal. Yeah? Yes, mm -hmm. that's correct. Probably. What are other... Airports are probably in the same yeah. scenario. I, mean, I, I doubt we could take Syracuse Airport. Well that's, how they they rent the well, that's how they negotiated their rent, I think, because they looked around to see what was comparable. Yeah. They're high so and they're it, low. It kind of makes yeah. sense. Right. And before the matter is our night, give them back that sign. Okay, <laughs> 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 yeah, with me. <laughs> just some help. Do I have a motion to approve this? Can you need a motion? I'd make a motion. Second. Okay, Bill, Mary second it? No. I'll, I'll second it. Okay. okay. My voice got a little higher. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, approval of the uh, Riverbank Power yes. Corporation. Yes. Item uh, D1 is approval of the agreement with Riverbank Power Corporation. 
Uh, the authority is working on an industrial development project with a developer, uh, Riverbank Power Corporation, that could result in certain land options and or lease agreements for authority lands. As part of the authority's due diligence, it's necessary to seek outside legal services to work with the authority to review and complete said land options and or lease agreements in regard to this industrial development project. As a result, Riverbank Power, River, <coughs> excuse me, Riverbank Power Corporation has agreed to establish an escrow account in the amount of $15,000 for the purpose of funding certain costs and fees incurred by the authority for outside legal counsel. We'll make the motion. Second. 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 Okay. All in favor, say so aye. 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 Uh, just before we move on, Brian, is there anything else? Could you add? John can get bring you up to date on it. If there is other questions, well, let me we, uh, let me set the appropriate expectations. The authority does not disclose matters of negotiation with. Uh, potential clients. And that's going to be our only only comment on this uh, only comment on this uh, particular item. Where are they from? Uh, again, same same comment on this, Brent. You know, we don't discuss our industrial development clients. Okay. Approval to the second outside council. Item D2 is a selection of outside counsel uh, with one of our industrial development projects, which may result in certain lands, options, or lease agreements for the authority. As part of the due diligence, it's necessary to seek outside legal services to work with the authority. You can see the firms that we have contacted there. Proposals were received from a variety of firms based on a review of the qualifications, experience, expertise, and ability to perform the work in both the specified time period, staff recommends hiring McKenna, Long, and Aldrich for this work at a cost not to exceed $15,000. The $15,000 received in escrow from the project developer will be used to fund these legal services. Questions? Motions in order. Please so move. Have a second. Don? Jim. <laughs> Aye. 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 We do have uh, a few other such matters for the board today. Uh, agenda item E1 is approval of lease of <clears throat> is approval of a lease agreement to General Services Administration. Uh, as you're aware, GSA lease for the Ogdensburg Social Security offices expires April 18, 2008. Staff negotiated a supplemental lease agreement with the GSA for 5,200 square feet of space in the 6th Industrial Building on five conditions. Term of the agreement, April 19, 2008, uh, through and including October 18, 2009. It's an 18-month agreement. And the annual terms, the rental agreement, 74,256. Monthly rate is 61,88 per month. Uh, totals $111,000 in, in change over the 18-month period. <coughs> the authority, the third point, GSA now has a broker-style system. Uh, the authority will pay Jones Lang LaSalle, a uh, broker for GSA, a commission in the amount of uh, $32.44.64, which is equivalent to 2.9126% of the rental stated in the point above. Point four, GSA agrees to terminate the right of early termination for the term of this agreement for the 18-month period. And last but not least, um, except as modified in the agreement, all other terms and conditions of the lease shall remain in full force and effect. Staff recommends approval of this agreement contingent upon receipt of the executed agreement from the GSA within 15 days of this, uh, within 15 business days of this resolution. If the executed document is not received within the 15 business days, uh, rates will be renegotiated, and this resolution would be considered null and void. Do you have any questions? Are we actually paying this broker commission? No. Yes, we are. We are. Recompensed, right? That's correct. But That's correct. We're getting it back. The, uh, the short version behind how we negotiated this, we went to uh, GSA and basically found out that they were dealing with a broker. We talked to the broker, and we said, look, we are looking for 
fair compensation for the uh, space that we're running. We're not looking to take advantage, so just increase it by CPI. The broker got agreement from GSA on that and then came back and said, oh, by the way, you now owe us 32, 44, 64. And uh, as a public authority and as this was not new business, uh, we pushed back quite hard on this and said, you know, go back to GSA and get your money out of GSA. You're not going to get it out of the authority on this. Um, so they went back to GSA. GSA was agreeable, and that results in the rates that you see. But is it, is it required that we front the money and get reimbursed, <coughs> or GSA is just going to take care of it? Um, no, what they did is they um, basically inflated the overall the overall rate to include that uh, 32, let me get my figures right here, but the 3245, and uh, basically that's uh, in the 74256. So we just, we just figured out what we owe them per month. We're, we're whole at the end of the day. No, but you're not, because you have to wait 18 months to get it back. No, so we're going to pay them every month, uh, Mark. You can take care of that, right? Send a check for that. You're going to amortize this over 18 months? Mm -hmm. the, yeah, that's right. We, we're not going to put the money up front and have them tell me a month from now they don't want the bill no more like they keep doing. Well, they no, well, they, 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 no they no longer have that option as part of the agreement. There is no early out option. <coughs> well, I'll tell you, uh, I don't know what's going on here with the federal government with their brokers, but make sure that these people are real. Please. This is the state, first of all. Huh? This is the state, first of all. They're federal. But what I'm saying about brokers is it, there's it's all the time people are paying them, and we're... They're not doing it. Huh? <clears throat> well, just the fact that they don't, they don't disclose prior to negotiation is very enough, in my opinion. Don't pay them until, until they sign the contract. There you go. We have a motion to approve this. Senate? So moved. I'll second it. Exactly. All in favor, say aye. 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 It's staying. Oh, it's staying. I know that. Such other matters. What's the next? What agenda item E2, Waddington. We have two. Uh, uh, lots that uh, need disposition now in Waddington. Uh, you recall that December 5, 2006, the board authorized for the, the uh, disposition of the remaining unsold lots at Waddington at 15000 per lot. Two of the lots remain unsold. It's recommended that the lots be dis dispositioned at 15000 per lot. Uh, we had a discussion previously, so we'll need to strike with the exception of lot number 20 at $10,000 due to the size of the lot. So the corresponding uh, corrected lot 15, tax map ID 13.081-1-36, minimum bid $15,000. Lot number 20, tax map ID 13.081-1-43, would also read minimum bid $15,000. No, I thought we no, we agreed to 10000 Because of the size. Because of the size. Oh, I... I Got the uh, opposite message of that in the. I didn't think we could. Discussion. They, they, they were appraised at 15. I, I don't have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with it. But I think the, the, the law said if, if, remember that, if you don't um, sell or something like that, it, so it goes back to what the market value is, and we couldn't sell them at the 15000 before, so now yeah. we're doing the same thing. We've set the market value by the previous bids. Yeah, which they so didn't with yeah. the AAA law, we're okay by so we're all right with 10. 15 and the 10. That's fine. And I thought that's what we agreed to. Isn't it? It says here. All right. So let's go back to, as as stated then, in the uh, the uh, approval for disposition of what it can last to clear, to clear it up. Uh, it's recommended the lots be dispositioned at 15000 per lot, with the exception of lot number 20 at $10,000, the size of the lot. Lot number 20, tax map 15.081-1-43, uh, .41 acres, minimum bid $10,000. Motion. A second. Motion made by Mary. Who seconded? Bill. Bill. All in favor, say, say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Those opposed. E3 is such other matters is approval of foreign trade zone site operations agreement with Canadian Renewable Energy Corporation. That's a mouthful. In an effort to limit the authority's participation in every operations of the foreign trade zone, 118 at the port, as it relates to the upcoming importation and exportation of windmill components, the authority has prepared a foreign trade zone site operation user agreement for the zone. This agreement grants the zone user, Canadian Renewable Energy Corporation, and or its customs bulk, the, the authority to utilize the zone as a foreign trade zone, subject to the terms, conditions, agreements, and restrictions set forth in the agreement, and in accordance with the standards of operations required by U.S. Customs and Border Protection. This also includes an activation fee of uh, $2,500 and an annual fee of $2,500, so there's some income associated with it for the privilege of using the, the zone. Those are add-ons? They've agreed to pay for that. They're, we have a right to charge them a fee. Do we need to put it in here? No, I don't think so. Any questions on the resolution? So they're paying the activation fee and the annual fee. They're just covering that. And the, and the handwritten change in here is, is part of the resolution. Is that right? For the importation and exportation of windmill? Okay. I'll make, I'll make the motion. I'll second. I'll second. Jim? All in favor, second to say aye. 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 E4 is insurance renewals. And at this point, <coughs> we're going to look at Yeah, sure. Uh, April 30th is our renewal date for the following policies you see listed here, which is the bulk of our policies other than the bridge property. Um, so you have property, general liability, auto, terminal operators, uh, which is the marine terminal, and the airport liability <coughs> and crime. Uh, we received a couple of quotes, one from Haler, Fryer, and Kuhn, and one from Rose and Kiernan. Um, as you know, we've dealt with Haler, Fryer, and Kuhn for 25 or so years, and then last year, Rose and Kiernan came in um, <coughs> for more lucrative proposals financially for us. Uh, this year the reverse came in and Haler, Fryer, and Kuhn are at 115464 for their premium package as opposed to about $2,800 higher for Rose and Karen. And so they're very, very comparable. Um, so it's $2,897, 2897 as a Rose and Karen and package. Um, so this being the lower package, um, this being the A-plus company <coughs> industry with Joe LeClaire and Haler, um, we're suggesting we take the Traveler's package listed here. And this is A-plus and the Rosenkiernan is? Rosenkiernan was split between three markets as opposed to just Traveler's. Um, Hartford was an A-plus and Praetorium was an A-minus. Yep. The other difference being Hartford and Traveler's are $2 billion companies and Praetorium was 500 to 750 million, so it's slightly smaller. Well, a smaller company. <coughs> some interesting Thanks, results from <coughs> Jim's suggestion a couple of years ago that we do some shopping at this. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, we've always shopped at, right? We've always shopped at. Our problem was we've had limited <coughs> markets because not too well, many people will cover the bridge, and not many people for our tiny player. Yeah, I think for years, Travelers was the only market that that would touch us. And now the market's turned soft the other way. Yeah, exactly what it tells you. Down to 143, down to 115. That is not exactly true, but it's fine. What is actually the truth on that is some of them over on this side won't monkey with that market because they can't get to certain carriers. And they got uh, kind of a cushion for each other there. You know, we don't bid against I, each I other. I think you're talking about brokers. Uh, That's another I'm issue. talking about travelers, too. Because one guy couldn't quote the price because Travers has already quoted the price. Because it's a broker right. of record issue. Sure. Yeah, whatever. That's why I say brokers need to be looked at. Do we have a motion to pass it? Make the motion. Second ballot. All in favor, sing to everybody saying aye. 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 Thank you. Last item up tonight under other such matters is approval of the <clears throat> permit with the Augsburg Youth Lacrosse Organization. I move. We're going to join the cross? Have a second. Second. All in favor, signature be saying aye. 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 Opposed. What did you for? No, that's a new one. Not more than. Right. 
Title IX issues, maybe? Mm -hmm. yeah, one more. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, no. Um, oh, I thought we were holding that. I didn't have it in my packet. Well, we've got a we've got a agenda item that's not quite complete. It was closed for today. We can hold it until next month. I have it. No, that's fine. Very sweet. Comments, citizens, or other board members and staff. Need a, uh, May 6th is the deadline for the date. It up already. Uh, motion to adjourn. You got a question before we adjourn, Mr. Chairman? I look, the the mm -hmm. forum is uh, the presence of the majority of the sitting board members shall be necessary to constitute the forum. forums. Is that sitting, the sitting yeah. on the board or sitting in the meeting? Sitting on no, the board. No, sitting on the board. So we so have with, that. Yeah, no, but you only have three votes on the ILA contract. Quorum had to be four of this, right? We don't. We're short a member as it is. We're, we're, four. we're not. Are we short? Short? I think we still have to count Connie. Yeah, she's not. Yeah, she's still on. But the point is, because of the concern of God, I asked our legal counsel when he's leaving, and he said, because I have no personal gain, nothing, no conflict with me, I can vote on that. So I'm wondering, does it make sense to re-vote on that, just so there's no issue? I I don't want someone to come up and say, hey, you know what? There was only three guys voting on it. Three members voting. I affirm, well, the record, my vote the on records it. show that the, that the board member, Bill Nelson, has uh, decided to vote in favor of the LA yeah. agreement. Yeah, B1, the approval of the Longshoremen's, I asked legal counsel, and he said there is nothing, no conflict, there's no, personally, nothing uh, gained from that, and so there's no, there would be nothing. And I just assume, have that on the record, that we had four members supporting it so that there is no issue. <laughs> that way they can't say that later that it was valid. It wasn't valid, that's right. <laughs> and like you said, I consulted with legal counsel. I went out there and asked him, and he came up. But I just I wasn't sure at the first time. Okay. Just let the record show that there was no uh, need for a meeting for the Augsburg Border Station this month. <laughs> and we have the meeting set for May 6th. We need a motion to adjourn our meeting. Do we have a second? I second it. All in favor, signal over saying aye. 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 John, have you seen that? I bet you did. <laughs> I want to email you. Oh, yes, I did. 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 Y